Arm. We must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one. I support a change in law to end federal criminal penalties for possession of up to one ounce of marijuana. That marijuana, pot, grass, whatever you want to call it, is probably the most dangerous drug. Some think there won't be room for them in jail. We'll make room. I experimented with marijuana a time or two, and I didn't like it and didn't inhale. And one major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. Entirely legitimate topic uh, for debate. Radical Rant. Welcome back, everyone. 48 after the hour. The title of today's rant is Anything That Ends Contraband Marijuana is worth voting for. And this comes up from time to time as states are fighting to make marijuana law reforms and questions arise among activists as to whether or not a particular marijuana legalization proposal is, quote, true legalization. And if it's not true legalization, whether or not we should vote for it. And this came up with 2010 with uh, Prop 19 in California. Some people thought a five by five grow was too small and the way that it uh, laid things out was too restrictive and it wasn't true legalization. You had some people, especially in the medical community, that were campaigning against it. We also in 2012 had a similar problem in Washington state with I-502, whereas it legalized marijuana, it also instituted a five nanogram per se DUID limit and forbade home growing. Many people complain that wasn't true legalization and therefore should be rejected, especially people, once again, in the medical marijuana industry that fought against that. Now, as we move forward, we have competing groups in California and in Ohio seeking to reform marijuana laws, and some of those competing groups refer to others as not being true legalization and should be opposed at all costs thought I would weigh in on this a little bit by saying any legalization that makes the ballot is worth voting for. And any legalization that ends the contraband nature of cannabis is legalization. Now, you can split hairs about legalization should always include the right to home grow, should equalize the rights of cannabis consumers with those who consume alcohol, should release the uh, pot prisoners and so forth. But to me, folks, those are additional legalization options that we fight for once we get marijuana legal. The prime directive of legalization is to end arrests for marijuana possession. Simply put for me, that's where it comes down to end arrests for marijuana possession. Now the secondary level would be end arrests for marijuana cultivation. And indeed I do believe that's incredibly important, but if it is a give or take, if the choice is here's legalization that ends arrests for possession, but maintains criminality of growing or maintain the criminality of possession and growing, then you've got to vote for ending the the criminality of possession. Now this comes to, and of course the third level would be end the discrimination against marijuana consumers, you know, give us equal rights and so forth. But I truly believe that ending the contraband nature of marijuana is the most important thing to accomplish. By doing so you erase the probable cause that exists or that is made up sometimes by law enforcement claiming to smell marijuana by law enforcement, seeing marijuana or by law enforcement's canine officers alerting to marijuana, whether it's actually there or not by ending those probable causes, you end much of the interaction that marijuana consumers are going to have with law enforcement. And it doesn't matter how much you legalize. Some people complain an ounce isn't enough. It wouldn't matter if you legalized a gram. A drug dog's nose and a police officer's nose cannot smell the difference between a gram and a kilogram of marijuana. You end that probable cause that allows police to bypass our Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination. And for those who are growing marijuana who fear that, well, if I vote for this law, growing is still illegal, it doesn't make it any more illegal than it currently is but it provides you the extra protection of police being unable to use the smell of marijuana or the tip that you use marijuana 
as some sort of pretext for busting down your door and finding your grow. And I think most paramount is the fact that once you are a legitimate legal marijuana consumer, you now have power as a citizen to fight for additional recognition of rights. For example, a situation where your choice is to vote for a legalization of possession without home grow or maintain continued prohibition means that if you pass the former, you can move forward in the following legislative sessions as a citizen trying to reclaim the right of home grow. But if you let prohibition continue, you are still a criminal fighting for the right to home grow. I believe we have more leverage as citizens, and especially as marijuana businesses begin, we get more leverage with the money and the lobbying power that comes with it. Now, let's get to a particular situation, this Ohio situation. Understand a very important caveat that I'm talking about when something makes the ballot and it is the only choice. Obviously, if more than one thing makes the ballot, pick the one that's better. Just again, to pick on Ohio, if Ohio rights group medical marijuana makes the ballot and responsible Ohio's marijuana cartel makes the ballot, feel free to vote for the medical and to reject the uh, cartel monopoly. Because at least then some progress will, be, will have been made in Ohio and there will be some medical to step forward from to work for further legalization. Now, there could be the complaint, but Russ, what if the responsible Ohio is the only thing that makes the ballot? Shouldn't we vote against it since it puts in the Constitution a cartel of 10 growers? No. I think if the choice is vote for that or continue prohibition, that you vote for a cartel monopoly of growers. And the reason why is because I do not believe a cartel monopoly of growers is a tenable situation. I believe it will collapse. And, and part of why it will collapse is people will grow anyway. They always have been. And by legalizing marijuana possession and the retail sales and having stores, marijuana stores and marijuana consumers will be more empowered to fight for greater rights. Another constitutional amendment could be proposed and the stores and the customers could actually have the money to fund such a thing to fight for the legal right of home grow or to end that constitutional monopoly. If the constitutional monopoly is a bad idea, enacting it will reveal how bad an idea it is from the production standpoint. But at least Thousands and thousands of Ohioans won't be arrested and have their lives ruined over a marijuana possession situation. It's always difficult in these situations to determine what is and is not a deal breaker for you. It was very tough for me with I-502 in Washington State. I-502 accomplished my number one goal. It ended arrests for marijuana possession. It reduced a annual arrest total from over 5,500 to under 200 in just one year. Thousands of lives were changed for the better. But to get that, there was also the acceptance of that five nanogram per se DUID, which has also impacted people's lives for the worse for having to defend themselves against an unnecessary DUI and undeserved DUI charge. And there's that proscription on home growing, not being allowed to grow at home. But to my point of view, that didn't change what was happening for people that were growing at home in the first place. They were illegal before, they're still illegal now. And there's the concern over I-502 and its effect on what may happen with medical marijuana, which of course I always argue isn't I-502's fault, it's medical marijuana's fault for not having become organized and the governor who vetoed their chances to organize. But even seeing what I've seen now in the wake of I-502, had I to do it all over again, I would still vehemently argue for the support of I-502. Because now we're hearing about bills in the legislature that will allow for home grow, 
they've come to the reality, they've recognized the reality that you cannot legalize possession of a plant and not legalize the personal cultivation of that plant. It just isn't working. And while some of the proposed changes to the medical marijuana side are being opposed by people with medical marijuana uh, priorities, I think a lot of this is just um, overreaction. And I think that much of what is being proposed to align medical and recreational in the state of Washington is not unreasonable. It's not perfect, but we're trying to take an imperfect situation in Washington state of a completely unregulated dominant medical market and merging it with a highly, in fact, I would say overregulated, overtaxed recreational market. I think there will be a meeting in the middle somewhere and both systems will become better because of it. We'll continue to focus on what happens all across the United States, the state of Ohio, state of Oregon, Florida still fighting for its medical marijuana, Alaska continuing to develop their regulations for its recreational marijuana, and then California. How will the Californians come together? The business interests there aligned with medical marijuana, the hardcore true believer activists who won't settle for anything less than what they consider to be true legalization. It is the story of 2015, I'd say second only, to the uh, election for president. And that election for president will be very affected by these fights across the country for marijuana legalization and medical marijuana. More states are starting to recognize that medical marijuana is inevitable and that CBD only won't cut it. And more progressive states are starting to recognize if they don't legalize marijuana soon, they're gonna miss out on the glory days of big marijuana tax profits. We'll be here to cover it for you every weekday, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on 420radio.org and radicalrust.com. But that's all the time we got for Hour 1. Thanks for joining us. Hour 2 is up next with more stories, news, and views you can use for the cannabis community. For everyone here at Rolla J Studios, I'm Radical Russ. Until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You take a scene, you plan it, you grow it, you giant, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a scene, you plan it.